What's going on friends? If you're in the market for a brand new Harley Davidson, the best thing you can do is actually jump out there and buy the one you want. Don't settle for a lesser model because if you do so, you could really end up falling into the Harley Davidson trap if you don't really do your homework and do your research before you buy. And by trap, I'm not just talking about that high monthly payment. No matter whether you're buying a new or used Harley Davidson, we all want to get the best deal out there. That's just natural when you're throwing down your hard earned money. But when it comes to Harley Davidson, they have quite the marketing scheme going. When it comes to buying a new Harley Davidson, there's really no value in it. The way Harley Davidson prices their bikes and the way they design their models, this is all built into one big trap. So you want to be very, very careful in selecting a new Harley Davidson motorcycle so you don't end up putting so much into it that you could have just bought the special or bought the next one up. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. That's where the secret to buying a new Harley Davidson comes into. You need to jump out there and buy the exact one you want. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself in the parts catalog and, as I mentioned, you're going to spend a lot more than you intended to. That's the secret. So what is Harley-Davidson's marketing trap? Now, I'm going to warn you, forewarn you now, brace yourself with these prices because we are talking about brand new Harley-Davidson motorcycles and we're going to get to why it pays to really maybe buy a used one or even an older one. So let's start at the bottom of the big twin line with the soft tail standard. This bike right now sells for $14,399 on a 2023 model. Now, $14,399, that's expensive, yes. But to get into a big twin Harley Davidson when you're comparing prices, that's not a bad price. So that bike automatically looks pretty attractive to a prospective buyer. Now, at $14,399, the Softail Standard is a great bike if you want to buy it and really do nothing more than a stage one to it. On the Softail Standard, they forego a lot of the really nice, clean black finishes. They leave a lot off that bike to really help keep the price down. Now don't get me wrong, it's still not a bad looking motorcycle, but if you decide to do a lot more to it than what you intended to, you can find yourself kind of uh, upside down in it pretty quick. So if you bought that soft tail standard for $14,400, full pop retail, dealer fees, this and that, you're probably looking at about $15,000 out the door. The problem is you're gonna own this bike for a little while, you're gonna start looking at it, and you're gonna be like, oh, I wanna change this or I wanna add that. Now, the price difference between the Softail Standard and the Street Bob, only about $2,200. So keep that in mind if you're looking at buying the entry-level Softail Standard. You may just be better off going to the Street Bob, and I'm gonna show you why. This is how Harley-Davidson gets you with that low price point. You're gonna get this bike, it's got all the silver finishes, it doesn't have a passenger seat, it doesn't have passenger pegs, there's a lot of fit and finish left off this bike. So naturally, what do you do? In today's world, a lot of people are blacking everything out. You start swapping out all those silver pieces for black pieces, you either buy them from the Harley catalog or you're pulling them off and having them powder coated. Either way, you're already starting to put money into this bike. Just putting a rear set of pegs on it in a passenger seat, that could run you four or $500 depending on where you get it. Now, of course, you go to Amazon or eBay and do that a lot cheaper, and there's some risks associated with that, which I'll cover that in another video. But the one thing you've really got to remember about that soft tail standard, it comes with the Milwaukee 8107. We're talking a $2,200 price difference here to get a Milwaukee 8 114, passenger seat, passenger pegs, blacked out finishes, and not to mention you do get a choice of color on the Street Bob versus the soft tail standard, which is only in black. Now I mentioned the soft tail standard only has the 107 engine in it. Okay, no big deal. Top end kits are not that bad to do, but if you just bought a brand new bike, you're gonna wanna have this done at the dealership to maintain the warranty on the kit. So immediately, you're already paying about $1,800 to get a 114 kit for that 107, not to mention the dealership's probably gonna charge you about, I'm ballparking here, maybe $2,500 to install that kit. So what are we looking at now? We're over four grand easy right there. Now you're probably already starting to see why it pays to go ahead, spend a little extra money up front, and get the street bob when you're looking at the soft tail standard. And this just isn't regulated to these two particular models. This is all throughout the Harley Davidson line. And you'll notice there really isn't any money to value ratio here as far as, well, this is a better deal versus this, unless this is absolutely what you want. So say if you're gonna get a soft tail standard, 
don't plan to do a whole lot to it. I mean, a few exhaust, air cleaner tune, some minor personalization, no problem. But if you really get down into it, you just end up building a street bob and it end up costing you a lot more. But hey, don't worry, it does get worse. When we move into the touring line, the price gaps get even further and the fit and finish gets even less. So no worries there, it does get worse. Now in the touring line, you can get a street glide or road glide. These bikes are roughly about $22,000 brand new. Not horribly bad, but what you have to remember is you get the 107 engine and you get chrome finishes only and you only have a limited selection of colors. But at $22,000, yes, that's expensive, but that's not too terribly bad for two of Harley's hottest selling models. Yes, you have to sacrifice a lot of color, fit and finish. I mean, well, you get chrome, but chrome's not really in today. But for 22 grand on a brand new Harley Touring bike, that's not exactly awful. But here's the trade-off on that base road glide and street glide. You can get a Road King Special with a 114 engine for about two grand more. Yes, it's two grand more, but you get the blacked out premium finishes, but at the same time, you also lose the fairing and the stereo. So whether that extra two grand is worth it to you for a 114 engine and the blacked out finishes, that's up to you to decide. Now the gap between the standard road glide and street glide is about $6,000. So depending on what you wanna do with those motorcycles, that leaves you a lot of room to play there. It's not as bad as it is on the soft tail models. If you really wanted to get down into it and the blacked out finishes aren't such a big deal and you're really just concerned with having a new motorcycle with a hot motor in it, you can buy the base road glide or street glide and actually do a engine kit, a 128 kit on it, or you can do a complete engine swap for a 131 on one of those motorcycles. Now, notice I said a 128 kit. You can't put a 131 kit onto a 107. You could, but you'd have to change the crank. So if you were to buy one of those bikes and get a dealer installed engine kit, you're looking at only a 128 cubic inch. Not a huge difference between the 131, but everybody kind of wants to have that big 131 number out there. But that's why I said you'd have to absolutely swap the engine out to get the 131. So it really comes down to absolutely what you plan on doing with your Harley Davidson motorcycle if you're buying one brand new. You just have to be really careful not to fall into that marketing trap. If you buy a base model Harley, you're going to end up wanting to put a lot of extra money into it in different finishes, different upgrades. There's going to be a lot of things you're likely going to end up wanting to change on the bike to make it more like the special, the next model up. So don't fall into that trap. But on the touring bikes, we have a pretty good gap, $6,000 between the base models and the special. That is a lot of room to work and play with only if you don't plan on changing out all the finishes. Because if you take a chrome motorcycle and try to put black finishes on it, that's going to get extremely expensive in a hurry. And anything that you save versus buying that base model is pretty much out the window at that point. But with the prices of new Harley Davidsons, this is why I absolutely love the older bikes. You can get so much for your money when it comes to buying a used Harley Davidson. Whether that be an old Evo, whether that be a twin cam, or even whether that be a Milwaukee 8. Chances are, at some point, if you're patient enough, you can find a bike that's already got the engine kit, that's already got all these things done to it, and it's probably gonna be probably less than half the cost of a new one. Not to mention, it's already all there and done. If you gotta go through the top end, no big deal. Plus, you don't have to worry about a monthly payment, and you're not falling into that Harley-Davidson marketing trap, where all of a sudden you're 20 plus thousand dollars into a motorcycle, and you're not necessarily happy with it, so you end up spending six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars more into it. Some people put a ridiculous amount of money into their motorcycles, which I completely understand. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But until next week, guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.